So in this video, coming as a sort of out of the blue, um, a friend asked me about um, digital signatures, which is part of public key cryptography. So the basic idea here is that we want to send a message or receive a message, and we want to be sure that it's coming from the person we think it is. Um, so how do we uh, how do we do that? How do we verify this uh, without secretly exchanging passwords or something? Um, now, some of the tools I use in this video, like you'll need to know about modular arithmetic and the Euler totient function and Fermat's little theorem. That's basically it. Um, I haven't really covered those in my number theory videos, um, but don't worry if you're trying to get caught up on that stuff. I will be returning to those videos um, pretty soon, hopefully by the end of the winter semester break. Uh, so let's just start talking about the algorithm. Um, so, of course, as our, our normal setup, we have two people, Alice and Bob, right? So the idea is that Alice um, is trying to send some sort of message to Bob. And um, Bob wants to make sure that Alice sent that message and no one else could have uh, sent it. There needs to be some signature on there. So um, the message itself doesn't even necessarily need to be encrypted. Of course, it could also be encrypted, um, but it's just about sort of putting that sort of digi digital fingerprint on there. So how is Alice going to go about doing this? So uh, first I'll describe the method, which will seem sort of crazy, and then we'll go back and review uh, why is this secure and why is this, does this um, you know, give Bob this assurance. So the method starts off um, with Alice choosing um, two prime numbers, P and Q. Um, and the point is, though, that these numbers, in order for this to be cryptographically secure, these numbers to need to be very large. Um, she's then going to choose, uh, she's, she's going to set the number N uh, equal to the product of P and Q. Um, and then she's going to pick, um, you know, just relatively at random. Oh, so I guess I should mention, you know, these numbers need to be uh, fairly large prime numbers, and they also should be drawn uh, basically at random, like from some pseudo random number generator to make sure it's secure. Uh, she's then also going to choose uh, just some uh, number which is less than phi of n. So remember, this is the, the Euler um, totient function. Uh, it counts the number of uh, those numbers which are less than or equal to n and relatively prime with it, that is sharing no divisors. Um, now, the important thing here, and we're going to revisit this, this point in a moment, is that it's easy for Alice to compute um, the Euler totient function here because she knows the prime factorization of n. Uh, so just to remind you, I mean, you can say look up on, on Wikipedia uh, the, the full formula for the uh, Euler totient function at n, if you know that it factorizes as p and q, uh, this is simply just going to be p minus one uh, times q minus one. So very easy for Alice to carry out that computation, um, to choose e, and then also to choose d, um, which is simply going to be the uh, multiplicative inverse of uh, e modulo uh, phi of n. No, of course, uh, phi of n doesn't necessarily um, need to be a prime number, and so multiplicative inverses aren't necessarily guaranteed to exist. Um, so that's just sort of one extra constraint, uh, say, on Alice picking uh, E, is that it needs to be um, a, a multiplicative, uh, it needs to have a multiplicative inverse for this to work. Okay, so this is the setup uh, for Alice. Um, and then now, Alice is. Um, uh, public key. So this is is uh, what she's she's going to send out the, to the world. So everyone knows this as Alice's public key. It's going to be the number um, e and n, and then the the private key uh, is going to be the pair of of numbers d and n. Well, I mean that part's sort of redundant because uh, the n is part of the public key. Um, now you might think you might think uh, here that if you had the public key, you could compute the private key. Uh, but we'll come back uh, and explain afterwards why that's not the case um, necessarily. So 
Um, so this is Alice's public key and private key. And then how she goes about um, computing the algorithm is, is say that the message um, that she wants to send Bob is some number M. So of course, you know, if we're encoding a message, we could imagine, uh, again, this doesn't necessarily need to be encrypted, uh, but you could just imagine turning, you know, this written message into some one particular uh, number representing the message. Um, what Alice is going to do is going to compute um, M raised to the power of D so that's her, um, that's part of her private key. Um, and then she is going to send uh, the, the pair M, S over to Bob, right? So, so what, does, uh, what does a potential eavesdropper know? An eavesdropper, of course, can read the public key um, and of course can, can read this message. Um, and we want to make sure that a, a, you know, a public uh, uh, an eavesdropper can't uh, forge this sort of di digital signature. Um, but there's still one thing to what we need to do is to check on Bob's end. So Bob is going to get um, this pair of things and this E and N. So how does Bob check that this message actually came from Alice? Um, well, what Bob is going to do is uh, compute this number M prime. And so he has the S. Uh, that Alice sent him with the digital signature, and he has the E. Uh, so he's going to compute S uh, to the power of E, and then he's going to reduce that uh, modulo N, which he also has from Alice's public key. And uh, he's going to take this M prime, and then the point of the algorithm is that if um, M is equal to M prime, uh, then he knows that it did in fact come from Alice. And if it did not, well, then someone uh, tried to forge this digital signature. Okay, um, but let's go back through some of these details and talk about why this is a secure process. So um, the, the sort of uh, first part of concern is that you see this um, this public key, and you might think, oh, well, if I know E, I should be able to compute E inverse, which is D, which is Alice's private key. But that's not necessarily true, because remember, what made it possible for Alice to compute phi of N was that we have this nice formula for computing the value of the Euler totient function at some number if you know the prime decomposition. But um, if someone uh, we're looking at, say, the public key N, you're going to have a hard time as an eavesdropper. Um, remember, we're imagining that we've picked, you know, pretty large uh, pair of prime numbers. So, so N is going to be even larger than that. And you're going to have a really hard time because this whole uh, scheme and, and RSA and a lot of encryption in general is based around the fact that multiplying numbers is easy, but figuring out all the prime factors is hard. So, if, you know, there's, there's basically two ways to do this. Either you figure out all the prime factors first, um, and then you use the, the formula for the Euler totient function, or, and I mean, this basically amounts to the same thing, you have to look through all the numbers that are less than equal to n, remembering that n is huge, and finding those which are relatively prime with n. But I mean, this basically amounts to the same thing as finding all the divisors up to multiplicity of n. So that's very, very time consuming. Um, and so, you know, especially if you're changing dig digital signatures uh, in, in between messages, uh, it's simply not feasible to crack this algorithm. So the one other problem uh, or one other question you might have lingering from this is, uh, well, uh, how does Bob know, right? Why, why would this work out um, if Bob had the correct information? Well, um, let's let's look at this number s to the power of of e, and uh, remember how did how did Bob actually compute or sorry how did uh, how did Alice actually compute s? What was that? Well, s was really m to the power of d, right? So this is m to the power of d to the power of e, which is really just equal to m uh, uh, to the power of d times e. But remember that Alice chose D to be the multiplicative inverse of E uh, modulo N. So that means that D times E is equal to one plus some multiple, we'll just call it K, of phi sub N. 
Um, and uh, so now let's consider uh, let's consider reducing this mod n because if you uh, recall, as I just explained, this this number m prime, which ultimately we're um, computing, is is you know we're doing all this and reducing it uh, modulo m, uh, modulo n rather. Uh, well, here if we factor this out, this is m times m uh, to the power of phi sub n. Uh, to the power k modulo uh, n. But uh, here's the important thing, is that um, by Fermat's little theorem, um, if we have, um, if we take a number and we put it to the power of uh, phi sub n modulo n, uh, then it must be the case, ah, and here's one extra thing, uh, um, which, if you recall, part of the condition for, um, uh, well, really, this is the, uh, the generalization of Fermat's little theorem known as, as Euler's theorem, is that the GCD of, of M and N uh, for this uh, to work has to be one. Um, so Alice does need to just um, check really quick when she first encodes her message um, that M and N are relatively prime, but remember this shouldn't be too hard because uh, Alice knows the prime factorization of N is just the product of these two primes P and Q. Um, and let's say it, it turns out just by random chance, um, it happens to not be relatively prime. Uh, well, then uh, she can simply tack on some some nonsense garble at the end, or uh, I mean, part of the choosing p and q sufficiently large um, could involve, say, choosing them large enough so that m is less than either p or q, um, and then certainly because those are prime, um, m will not be co-prime to n. So um, we can safely assume that m and n are co-prime. So then Euler's theorem tells us that m to the power of phi sub n modulo n is actually congruent to one. Um, and then while well, one to any power is still gonna be congruent to one. And so finally we see that indeed, um, if, if everything has been carried out correctly, then Bob should find that M, his M prime agrees with Alice's M. So that's it for um, this video, for this algorithm. Of course, if you have any questions at all, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I will uh, most likely be making some more cryptography videos uh, in the near future, um, and also getting back on track of number theory to uh, get people caught up to understand more of the cryptography videos.